want to showcase how radiology is a wonderful field and get um, it across to the medical students the impact um, that we do, you know, uh, that we have on patient care and the teamwork that we do. So, and here we are, we're doing the second Radiology Expo and um, it, uh, and I thought it was a good fit, that we'll end the work-life balance uh, aspect of radiology. And um, I hope the panelists and the volunteers had a genuine, satisfying We had time to think, well, what is the treatment? And we found that people would go Patients would come and the doctor would explain, but not totally. Um, and what we're doing is, uh, again, going to institutions, they would follow a common protocol of documenting findings before surgery or before radiation treatment and afterwards. I finally had my own airplane, a land airplane that I kept because uh, I was living in Washington, D.C. and it's in the airport between Washington and Annapolis. And so I enjoyed flying that out. One of my colleagues, one of actually fellows that I had from Israel back in 1998, she's now a senior radiologist, and she's been doing the screening in Israel, and she's almost there to get it into the national program of Israel, which would be the next country uh, that starts. Now China, you know, screening, we're, we're consultants to the National Cancer uh, Center in China, and there you saw a lot of naysayers, people up in the Ruben Stevens program, like doing CT scans as possible for costly on the screen method, especially back in the days, people were probably pushing back with like, smoking, even cigarette companies, so on and so forth. So, how did you deal with that pushback? Well, first of all, you're stating it in a very mild way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how they come at you. <laughs> Um, is the principal analytical lead at Google. She calls herself a data science geek and is part of the diversity committee at Google. She has an MBA in strategy marketing from UT Austin and has led the analytical team at Publicis for many years before she joined Google. She also mentioned that I lead the Women in Analytics org in Google Chicago. It is in this capacity that the rich math continued all the way to high school. I ended up choosing hotel management as an undergrad degree, a decision driven in equal parts by my love for the travel industry, but also by the internal notion that I could not do math and science. I want to take this a step further, but it's something if we acknowledge it, we can work on it, um, and try to you know, diminish some of the disparities that we have. Um, radiology, like, like even in the tech areas, we don't have enough women in the field and definitely you know, could use more. So. Thank you for that. We'll have first on your list um, for your first breakout session. Just to orient you, after our breakout session, lunch, and the final breakout session, we will have a wrap-up um, with some closing statements. Uh, don't forget that there is a uh, case of the day that's sort of up on this side, on the second floor, where you can try your contact. I would say probably breast imaging and interventional radiology. Uh, also, um, neuroradiology and musculoskeletal radiology do some procedures, and that's probably where they interact with patients the most. Um, abdominal radiology, what I do, um, the patient interactions mostly during fluoroscopy exams and ultrasound exams. Full patient. So this uh, was a 62-year-old woman. Um, she had some vomiting after going to Great America with her grandchildren and riding on the roller coasters and she got sick afterwards and had, uh, I think it was only, really only one episode of vomiting. She came into the ER with right-sided chest pain. They found out that she had an elevated D-dimer and leukocytosis. And then they did a chest x-ray on her first, so it showed very small right pleural effusion. Not that projecting very well, you see sort of blunting of that uh, right costophrenic angle, maybe there's a little bit of atelectasis, the emboli, so make sure she doesn't have any pulmonary emboli. Um, so anybody uh, want to say what they see on this chest CT uh, in the mediastinum? I and mean, you might think, oh, you know what, is that where the esophagus is? And it turns out it's not. The esophagus is actually right next to it, and that's an area of pneumomediastinum. So anybody have any ideas what might have happened uh, with this patient? Um, the next thing we did was an esophagram. So this is a hands-on exam with the patient. So the radiologist is in the room with the patient. They give the patient um, first water-soluble contrast to drink. They have the person move in a few different positions. Um, and here, 
we can see at the in the distal esophagus um, there's extra luminal contrast right there's contrast where it's not supposed to be it's no longer in the esophagus so yeah this is esophageal perforation then we have a lot of doctor contact also so I probably much more commonly speak with other doctors um, than the patients in my own abdominal radiology practice so most of my day is uh, spent reading CT scans ultrasounds MRIs I'm not directly with the patient but if we find something important we have to call the doctor or sometimes the doctors will come review the imaging with us um, and those are really nice worthwhile interactions um, that really help the other doctors take care of their patients. I really love radiology and one of the things I love about it is I can sit down and do my pile of CTs and then you get to talk a lot with the physicians and there's you know tumor boards and um, you know other kind of specialty conferences that you can attend. You can really do a lot of good for a lot of patients. Well, I had no idea what radiology was in the beginning of medical school. I wanted to be a pediatrician or potentially even a surgeon, to be honest. Those were my two things. I know they're very different. But I really enjoyed patient contact and I really enjoyed doing procedures, but I really loved kids as well. So when I started medical school and you're doing your clinicals your first couple of years, there's really not as much exposure to radiology. Well, speak, and as I already said, like, I don't think IRs can analyze in DR positions. We have, we have not, Changed our DR quantity to increase for IR residents. So, not cannibalization, I think that's the wrong, I think that's the wrong way to think about it. It is, anything is expanding. So, this is, I guess that's not Charlie. To do radiology specific research, um, when applied to either a DR or an IR function. You know, in, in an interview, you can figure out whether people sort of know what radiology is, and hopefully you do by the time you're, you're applying and that type of stuff. But I mean, that's, that, 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 well, that's not counted against. We're applying to ortho and radiology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that all the time. Days that I, you know, remember going, do I make it to tomorrow? Absolutely, there were days like that. But I am super grateful for where I am right now and how I've been able to actually have family through this process. Um, and my kids, I think, will hopefully be better for it, not yeah. 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 you know, Make sure everybody knows that, that children, you know, if let's say you, you, you have a career and you have children and they were, oh my God, am I there enough for the children? Now, I mean, now they, they've got data. I mean, they've got studies, you know, that have come out that show like, no, these children, they're fine. They're good. They're even, you know, maybe better, you know, doing well than, than people that had stay-at-home moms. So, yeah, and I, I'm one of them. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I think that's something that, you know, I think needs to, needs to really be driven home that, you know, the kids, kids will do well and do fine. And, um, you know, it's just that, um, like we said, there's a lot of different styles of practice that you can do. Um, I'm in an academic practice, and so I do teaching and research. I've done projects with Jamie, who was doing great you know, projects. And, um, but most like, of the time- I love it. I would almost do it if they didn't pay me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but it is an excellent field for having kids. I mean, I want to see my story case. Um, but it's like, what is what you're missing? Because I feel like the hardest one is like, but it's a bilateral thing, like, products. What? It's a general yeah. ask. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That'd be a good one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like, so our, and, and our program, we do it slightly differently. We do um, once every other week, you get a full day of, of ARE or academic time. Um, and so, but, turn it Following criteria for building this career path, leadership, technology, interdisciplinary, compensation, increasing demand. Team B. Say it louder. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> Team B. Team B is your choice. Which of it's more ionizing radiation? A using a cell phone, B sleeping next to someone. Team A. What is sleeping next to someone? What is sleeping next to someone? Congratulations. Evidence-based guidelines for obtaining the most appropriate
took it to Yeah, I, uh, so the only yeah. reason I kind of like the piano is more. Yeah. But all extraneous objects. No, I was trying to find. These two that are going in.